good morning students the whole concept of genetics we have almost done it now what are the basic things of this and how it got advanced that we are going to study now. whatever i explained you till now i hope some of you people have done that and showed me in the homework section but many of you are i don't know whether you are watching it or not but i want you to clearly see the things and understand the subject right so today i want to just revise some of the concepts of molecular biology because all the time what we did till now those are little co complicated in the sense most biochemistical biochemistry subject it is so i don't want you to be just going like this without having proper basics and already you all learned it but still i want to just brush it up okay then so what we started with molecular biology it is the important the macro molecule of the cell is the nucleic acid the dna and rna right then what are the dna and rna consists of so let me give you one small rev revising thing that is about the dna so what is that dna is the thing what deoxy ribose nucleic acid acid okay what it is made up of all the nucleic acids are consisting of polynucleotide chain the chain of nucleotides so any of the nuclear here dna is also a type of polynucleotide chain containing deoxy ribose sugar so dna can be referred to as first point it is a polynucleotide chain chain containing deoxy ribose sugar deoxy ribose sugar okay now let us begin with nucleotide what is a nucleotide so these are all questions whatever i am saying you just mark them and one one mark question you are going to expect right nucleotide is the unit of what nucleic acid acid one unit a nucleotide consists of what are the parts of nucleic acid one pentose sugar this is the pentose sugar plus a nitrogen base plus a phosphate group okay this is the next part that is one nucleotide i told you polynucleotide chain means one nucleotide one nucleotide one nucleotide like that many nucleotides are attached to each other this is a polynucleotide chain this is a nucleotide 1 2 3 4 5 then what is a nucleotide it can serve three units one is a pentose sugar this is sugar one is a nitrogen base another one is the phosphate group this we call it as a pentose sugar and this is pent pentose sugar nitrogen base and a phosphate group we call it as a nucleotide one unit of nucleic acid that is nucleotide is consisting of this part then how are they arranged these things are arranged in some pattern first is pentose sugar i am writing this is the pentose sugar right the pentose sugar have five carbons right so this is the first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon then fifth carbon is ch2oh this is the fifth carbon okay this is a five carbon compound here you get oh group here you get h group as it is dna you will get here h and the h here here you get the oh group here it is h it is h and ch2oh this is a pentose sugar now how the nucleotide is formed on the first carbon of this there will be binding of nitrogen base it may be either adenine or guanine or cytosine or thymine it binds then on the fifth carbon you get a phosphate group right here it is a po4 group po4 group right this is one nucleotide this is the sugar okay this is the nitrogen base this is the phosphate group together 1 2 3 it forms a nucleotide a nucleotide you just remember one pentose sugar five carbon atom sugar then one nitrogen is one is a pentose that is a phosphate group now if from the nucleotide 
if phosphate is removed if it is minus then we call that as the nucleoside right this is another thing to remember what is a nucleoside it is nothing but one sugar plus nitrogen base that's all without phosphate group we call it as a nucleoside remember one more question the question will appear like this differentiate between nucleotide and nucleoside or what is a nucleotide or what is a nucleoside so nucleotide is a unit of nucleic acid consisting of one pento sugar one nitrogen base and one phosphate group then where are they arranged the phosphate group is attached on the 5 prime end or fifth carbon atom of the sugar by phosphodiester linkage this is a phosphodiester linkage amount then the sugar get the attachment of nitrogen base this is the attachment which contain covalent bonds this is how one nucleotide will be there in chemical way chemistry of one nucleotide is this right now what next is nucleoside nucleoside is a nucleotide without a phosphate group is called a nucleotide minus one phosphate is called as a nucleoside see i want all of you to write these marked points this is the bullet points i'm giving you these things you want to write the details don't just write whatever i'm writing here read the book refer other notes also your epl book is there with you read it and then make the points because i've seen some of the students are writing whatever i write on the board they're just copying no i will be writing those points only because i'll be explaining a lot of things right whatever i write is one just point it is that point will have one paragraph meaning or one page meaning like that one whole unit will be in one way i explain therefore don't just copying this will not make a notes for you it is a point of all the concepts okay so now is it's your duty that you will have to take each one of them and underline them separately write like what is a dna you have to write what is it how do you define dna polynucleotide chain what is a nucleotide what is pento sugar then what is nitrogen base what is the nucleoside so like this one by one you will have to understand and explain okay now with the background of this i will continue with the nitrogen bases see once you understand this only you can go and understand you would have seen already replication of dna I explain then protein synthesis i was explaining you in the last class that time i told very clearly how exactly the nucleotides will bind to form a new strand that is complementary base pair strand right that means basics of this dna if you understand the further things become very simple to you okay fine then. now continuing with the nitrogen bases the points i am giving you the nitrogen base pairs or nitrogen bases nitrogen bases are of two types first ones are called as purines second one are called pyrimidines purines are namely adenine with a and guanine that is g we represent it by a and g okay next pyrimidines are cytosine c then thymine that is t right these are the nitrogen bases always purines bind with the pyrimidines right that is next thing that is about the base pairing how is base pairing happening if it is a two strand structure these nitrogen bases pair with each other how are they going to pair always adenine pairs with thymine by two hydrogen bonds and guanine pairs with cytosine by three hydrogen bonds or t to a c to g right so those who are not properly understood now you understand i am making it simple things what all you have to remember this is like a cream of it right if you learn this then understanding the depth of the subject becomes easier 
So I am making it again one more effort I am giving you for you to understand what are these. Okay? Now there is one base pair rule, right? That you remember. There is something called as base pair rule. Or we call this also as base pair equality rule. Means always the base pairs should be equal in number. That was given by scientist Chargaff. It's called a Chargaff's rule. Right. What is Chargaff's rule saying? According to him, amount of adenine will be equal to amount of thymine. Right? If it is a double strand structure, as A is pairing with T, how much of adenine is there, it should be same amount should be thymine. Adenine amount should be equal to thymine or thymine should be equal to adenine. Then, another one is guanine must be equal to cytosine. How much of a cytosine is there, so much guanine also should be there. So, that is followed by DNA. DNA follows this. So, based on this, there is one an example I will give. Okay? So, keep this in mind. Okay? Take them down and then write the points on this. Now I give you some one of the problem regarding the nitrogen base pair rule. About the base pair rule, some questions will be asked in need. Right? What is the question? I just write the question. Then you will have to solve this. I'll give you clues for that. Okay? Now the example. I'll give you one of the problem on this base pair rule. In DNA, okay, if cytosin is around 15%, how much or what is the percentage or how much, what is the percentage of other nitrogen bases? This way the question will be there. Okay. So what is this explaining? So cytosin, I'm sorry, cytosin is around 15%. Right? So C is equal to given C is equal to 15%. Okay. And you already know that there is a base pair equality rule saying that amount of cytosin should be equal to amount of guanine or C equal to G, G equal to C. That means this is given, already given. Therefore, amount of guanine also must be equal to 15%. Right? It is the understanding. If suppose the cytosin is 15%, then cytosine pairs with guanine. Therefore, guanine also must be is about 15%. So, totally you got 30% now. So, C plus G equals 30%. Now, how much will be A and T? So, 100 minus, what did you do? 100 minus 30, right? This is equal to 70, right? Now, adenine plus thymine equals to 70 by 2. That means, each one will be same, right? Then, therefore, you will get 35%. That is, adenine will be equal to 35% and thymine will be equal to 35%. Okay? That's how we are going to count them. Identify. This is adenine and thymine. This is the guanine. This is cytosine. So if this is 30 percent. This is 35, 35, 70. Okay. That's how we are going to calculate amount of adenine and thymine based on one nitrogen base value if they have given you. Did you follow this? This question. You just go through any of the papers. Either it or CD. Such questions are there. Right. Therefore, it. Simply means you should have to understand properly Chargaff's rule. Chargaff's rule simply says these nitrogen bases show base pair equality rule. Means amount of adenine should be equal to amount of thymine. Guanine must be equal to cytosine. And one more thing. A by T plus G by C will be a constant number. Where in but every species, every species has this is a constant number. It will not vary. Right? Therefore, what is the total amount of ATGC constant number you have to charge of rule according to that base pair equality rule? How much is that content of ATGC you will have to learn? 
how what equal or how what human beings are not, there will be some constant number will be there. They right? do not simply vary. Okay? That's about the rule base pair rule. Okay? Understand this, this problem is important. Many a time they have been asked this. Just go through this problem once again. If I asked you cytosine, you know, it's given sometimes they ask you guanine, and sometimes they ask you adenine. Only the clue for this is if they asked you or they have given you our thymine, then you should take the same equal quantity of adenine. If the thymine is given as 10 percent, then adenine should be 10 percent. So that is 20 percent. 100 minus 20, 80. Then cytosine and guanine should be 40, 40. That way you will have to write. Did you understand this? This is simple logic and you know mathematics better than any biological people, right? So then you will do it easily, right? Then, let's move on to the next thing. This is about the nitrogen base pairing. Then we will talk about the, the structure of DNA. This is before entering into the DNA. I told you all these things. Let us now talk about the structure of DNA. So, structure of DNA was given by scientist, scientists Watson and Crick. So, Watson and Crick proposed a model. Watson and Crick. Some another person who was involved with them was Wilkins. We can write his name also. Some of the books are given Watson, Crick, and Wilkins model. So, if they have not given Wilkins, you can leave it. But all the three shared the Nobel Award. Watson Crick proposed one model, physical model. It is the same way you will not get it in the microscope. If you observe under microscope, you won't get the ladder like structure, remember. Right? Most of the students will be expecting if I open up in the microscope, I keep one DNA and get all this. No. This is the structure given by them, which was observed through X ray. Crystallography only. Crystallography. If you want to know what is this, you just go through. These are certain techniques. Right? You try to study what is this, and being a physics and chemistry people, you will understand it easily. Right? So, X ray crystallography technique, they identified that DNA shows the double helix model. It is a model given. Okay? Model is an almost schematic structure. It is a DNA double helix structure. Right? Now, I would like to tell you that you people have to sit, because I have seen some of you are doing homework, but you are not giving importance for the diagrams at all. Right? That too, DNA structure is very, very important for you. Almost in any exam, you will get DNA. It is so beautiful structure also. So many biochemistry companies and Biotech company, they know they keep it that DNA structure as a logo. So make that drawing correct, technically right, not just beautiful diagram. Right? So first make two columns like this, one column like this, and start drawing the DNA structure. Try to take it more wide than long, like this. Okay? This is the one of the strand. I'm just drawing this one strand I'm drawing. And as your pages are long, you draw around 2-3 such coils. So long you draw. Don't write more wide. Draw them more long, thin. Right? Otherwise they look very ugly. Right? So next strand I will draw next to this. Parallel to this. Okay? This is this way. It's running. I put a make out, right? If it is fine, that's okay. Otherwise, I'll we'll just draw it once again. So, this is the another strand, whatever I am drawing. So, wherever you are drawing, if it is overlapping, you erase the overlap portion. Okay? The structure. Okay? This drawing, you will have to draw very neatly. What you have to maintain here, it is the parallel condition of these two strands. Okay? This is parallel, this is parallel, this is parallel. So, these strands should have the same width. Can see this? 
this should not go wide because okay, I am observing still many people are writing wrong diagrams these are parallel you don't draw like this like this this is not parallel check it how are they parallel they are one is so wide one is so small and some of the students very funny thing they do is they draw like this okay another strand also they draw almost like this okay these are the mistakes i told you don't do it then you have to lay, have the labeling or the cross nitrogen basis like this one strand one strand two right so many times they do like this this is in the same strand this is the same strand here running this is wrong okay you will have to make the nitrogen base bindings between two strands this way you can't do like this like this like this it's wrong these are wrong this is wrong right therefore i am taking up as a revision class because i want you to draw it beautifully at least like this it should have two strands they are bound and between by nitrogen bases like this you should draw okay then now let me talk about these are wrong things you are not supposed to do this i told you let's continue with the strand this is a sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar and phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar so whenever nitrogen bases are there they are binding or they are connecting the two sugar units so there will be nitrogen base adenine to thymine guanine to cytosine cytosine to guanine thymine to adenine like that all those things at least small small ones should just make it happen right one of the strand running in 3 prime to 5 prime direction this is 3 prime to 5 prime direction one is 3 prime to 5 prime here actually the reverse it is it will run always in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction okay continuation 5 prime to 3 prime direction this is 5 prime to 3 prime direction this is 3 prime okay done now we have to label this this you write it as a dna strand containing sugar and phosphate containing strands okay these are the two strands then these are the nitrogen base pairs base pairs these are the only things to label but now one more thing has to be labeled as you can see observe the dna is undergoing the coiling like this like this it's a coil you can see this three prime like this it's a right handed helix here one of the strand it shows the major group there's a major group and its minor group is here minor group this complete coiling of a strand is called as a guide okay this also you have to label what is guide right then between the two nucleotides successive nucleotides you get the length of 3.4 angstrom units there's a length between distance between two successive nucleotides is 3.4 angstroms then one complete guide contain 10 nitrogen base pairs Therefore, gyr length is 34 angstroms. Okay, that is the calculation. We have to write that also. Now, the width of DNA from here till here, the width is 20 angstroms. Right? That's about the structure of double helix DNA. So, what all you have to explain in the DNA structure? Right? So, let me list them off. First. DNA is a double helical structure according to Watson and Crick. Right? Next, the two strands of DNA are made up of sugar and phosphate as the backbone. Right? Then the two strands always run in 
in the opposite direction. They are parallel, but in opposite direction they move. Therefore, we call it as they are the anti-parallel style. They run in a reverse direction to each other. They are called anti-parallel styles. They are against each other. Then one more thing, you can see one side it is third carbon free, one side fifth carbon free. Therefore, they show up the two strands show opposite chemical polarity. Important word you remember. The two strands, as they are running antiparallel to each other, they show opposite chemical polarity. Understood? This word, so whenever you talk about strand, you, you have to completely finish this. The two strands are made up of sugar and phosphate as a backbone. Then, oh, they are made up of sugar and phosphate. They act as a backbone. Then, they turn on imaginary axis at the, as a right-handed helix in BDNA. In ZDNA, it will be the left-handed helix. Now, coming to the next one. The DNA will have the two strands that are antiparallel to each other and they run in opposite direction and the strands show opposite chemical polarity means they have the different polarity both strands would have the same polarity they have opposite chemical polarity correct now apart from that the nitrogen bases the nitrogen bases connect the sugar of one strand to the sugar of another strand and these nitrogen bases follow Chargaff's rule that is base pair equality rule and always adenine pairs with thymine, guanine pairs with cytosine or thymine to adenine, cytosine to guanine, right? This adenine pairing with thymine will be with two hydrogen bonds and cytosine pairs with, the guan, with guanine with three hydrogen bonds, right? And amount of adenine will be equal to thymine, amount of guanine will be equal to cytosine, right? They form the rungs of the helix. This is the circular staircase like structure. The steps are made up of nitrogen bases or the rungs of the DNA helix are made up of nitrogen base pairs. Correct? Now, the strand the between the two nucleotides, the distance is 3.4 angstroms. A complete one term for every strand is called as a guide. Guide involves 10 nitrogen base pairs. Therefore, the length of guide is 34 angstroms. Okay. Then the width of DNA is 20 angstroms. This structure is done. Then you have to add up the stability of the DNA strand. DNA becomes stable because of certain chemical bonds in that. One is between sugar and phosphate is phosphodiester bond. Between the sugar and the nitrogen base is covalent bond. Between the two nitrogen bases it is hydrogen bonds. Right? This completes the explanation of the double helical model of DNA. Okay, did you get it? Fine. You draw right points and show me. Fine? Okay then. Now let me revise you the next part. That's about the DNA replication. So this is again the most important part for you because a lot of questions from each of that each one unit or one enzyme, one protein may appear. Okay, let me give you something about DNA replication. Okay. Now let me give you in background what is replication. So you all know that replication means doubling of DNA. Question is why the DNA has to double? Because whenever cells <coughs> are multiplying, their daughter cells must get equal amount of DNA. So the DNA will have to double before the division. That is almost in the interface. You would have seen where exactly it doubles. Suppose you observe the cell cycle, right? You get only small phase of divisional phase or M phase we call it. Metaphic, that is mitotic phase. Remaining this whole thing is interphase only. It is an interphase. An interface we divide it into different parts. First one is G1 phase, next large one is S phase, then G2 phase, right? Exactly in S phase, this will be double. So, although I am revising, some of the things which are also in depth are required that I am explaining to you now. Don't think exactly same to same I am explaining now. So many times revision means the same thing I will be explaining. You know, I will be adding some new points into this. 
this right which i might have not told you earlier because of the main concept making you understand so some of the small small things have been left or i i thought that you will read it because some questions additional things come from this therefore we should know in the whole of cell cycle at the phase yes phase dna undergo replication so come the dna replication we will have to learn what how exactly it do it does it so this was once a question in which phase of cell cycle dna doubles or dna undergo replication this is the phase we call it as a synthetic phase or the s phase now you have learnt i think have you learnt this that is during replication of dna if it is multiplying then s phase how exactly it multiplies and what is cell division phase so now before i enter into the replication i would like to give you something about the cell division because often i was explaining you about the cell division mitosis meiosis whose background is first pc part okay now instead of saying it's a division i will say that i will be doing something on the cell division this is important for you in examination therefore i say it is a cell division mitotic and meiotic meiotic cell division this i give you now this is a first piece part but to understand the complete of molecular of whole by molecular biology you need to understand the whole of cell biology properly cell division mainly now come to the cell division there are two types of cell division one is mitosis and another one is meiosis right this is mitosis and this is meiosis and oh yes i yes mitosis and meiosis how do you differentiate once i finish both of them we can differentiate if i don't uh, explain you this and simply if i classify them and explain you difference so then you will not understand why i am i saying this is right point for mitosis this is point for meiosis so before you do any questions there is a need for you to learn the concept therefore as molecular biology often go back to the cell division i would like to give you cell division as the major revision of first pc part which is basic of molecular biology okay now come to the mitotic cell division let's begin with mitosis then i go to the meiosis anyway extra in mitosis we call it as an equational cell division meiosis we call it as a reductional cell division okay these are the two types of cell divisions right apart from that binary fusion you have learned it it is not very equal in nature it's somewhat amitotic it's not clear mitotic division now let us begin with the first cell division mitosis cell division mitosis what happens in mitotic cell division you have learned already first pc part but still i would like to give you what is mitosis in detail with the drawings because drawings are also important here i would like to give with some colored pen also now what is the mitotic cell division it will have two stages sub stages one is karyokinesis second one is called cytokinesis okay parts of this cytokinesis what is karyokinesis it is the division of the nucleus new nucleus normally divides it is called division of the nucleus then what is cytokinesis it is the division of the cytoplasm okay now let me give you something about the karyokinesis in detail so karyokinesis divisible into four important parts first one it is prophase okay second stage is metaphase third stage is anaphase fourth stage is telophase okay four stages prophase metaphase anaphase telophase so let me draw a diagram already because unless i draw it you will not understand properly and it is a very important revision i am doing because telophase i'll write at the end right now what will happen in prophase the chromosome or the chromatin from the interphase time interphase it will be diffused like chromatin it will not be having any proper thread 
structures of chromosomes. Now what happens in this chromosomal structure begins to appear clearly. Right? You can see some thread like structures and in prophase you have the cell membrane, the nuclear membrane and the chromosomes are appearing little clear. Thread like structures are clear, clarified. And almost the syndromias look at this base of one point and that is looking like one bokeh like structure and these are chromatin therefore they will get the thread like structures with the dotted things. Right? This is the chromosome. When I told you about the chromosome you have remember the arms. So this is like a bokeh stage and there will be nucleolus which is beginning to disappear. Nuclear membrane and nucleolus begin to disappear. Apart from that, one more thing happens is, in this stage, the centriole will divide into daughter centriole. Centromia divides into two daughter centrioles and it starts moving towards the respective poles. This is the daughter centriole. Right? And this, this is the nuclear membrane which is dissolving. Okay? This is the nuclear membrane. And this is the nucleolus. And this is the chromosomal content. Chromosomes begin to appear like thread-like structures. That is the first thing, that is the prophase. Now, metaphase is the stage where the chromosomes get highly condensed by multiple coiling and they get arranged on an imaginary equatorial plate. And then, one more thing is, there is no nuclear membrane nor there will be any nucleolus in this. Okay? So therefore, here the chromosomes are arranged in the imaginary equatorial plane with their centromeres almost at the center. All the centromeres will be aligned together. Okay, like this. This is how they are arranged. And the spindle fibers are formed from the daughter centriole. This is the spindle fiber formed from the daughter centriole. One daughter centriole, another daughter centriole, they form asters, asters, and spindle fibers. Spindle fibers will pass through the chromosomal kinetophores. Like this. This is the, these are the spindle fibers. Fibers, and this is the centriole. These are the asters, and these are the chromosomes arranged in the equator. So important point of this is chromosomes are highly condensed and they are arranged in the equator. And at this stage, one thing I would like to give you, at the stage of metaphase they are highly condensed and at this stage you have to do karyotyping. So what is karyotyping? The additional thing I give you here. What is karyotype? Already one word I told you, karyotype. It is spreading all the chromosomes throughout. Actually, there is a technique in which you put the cover glass and some oil immersion you put it and slightly tap them, the chromosomes spread to this neatly in the, on the slide and you can observe them under microscope. We can see how many pairs and how many are there. They have to be human chromosomes, their karyotype. All the 23 pairs, where are they present, how are they arranged, how many sets are there, how many metacentric chromosomes, how many telocentric chromosomes, how many acrocentric chromosomes, you can see. Here also I have drawn, just see, this is some metacentric chromosomes. This is almost like some metacentric chromosomes. Some are metacentric chromosomes. You can see very clearly how are they arranged at the stage of metaphase. So karyotype is the complete analysis of one species chromosomes that are highly condensed in metaphase to study their type of chromosome, their position of centromere and the number of chromosomes and the shape of chromosome. This is very important for one mark. Ideogram, they put the graph and identify how much big is, how big is the long arm, how big is the short arm. So, at this stage, this is the very clearly seen. Here you can see thread like thing, but highly condensed work in metaphase. Next stage is anaphase. Anaphase is the stage where chromosomes are 
cut at the centromere position. Here they are cut and they are pulled by the spindle fibers. Okay. Now I draw again the centromere. 1, 2, 3, 4. Spindle fibers I am drawing. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. Now our chromosomes are cut at the centromere position and they are moving towards the respective poles. One is here. One is here, one is this side, they are all cut, you can see they are bivalent like things, right. This is the way they are pulled towards the respective poles. This is the anaphase. So what are the points to remember in this? The chromosomes are cut, right. They are cut at the centromere position centromere okay and the spindle fibers begin to contract spindle fibers get contracted means they will be the, the elastic they will cut and they will be pulling towards the respective poles therefore chromosome number that has doubled now are separated here right now telophase is the stage where the division is completed and they would have already reached the respective poles. Suppose this is the cell, the chromosomes are pulled towards both the poles and they will be almost over here now. Okay, this is one chromosome, this is another chromosome, all the food I write here. Here again, four chromosomes, all the bivalent chromosomes they are having, only one one. They are here. Now, after karyokinesis, the cell cytoplasmic division starts. This is called cytokinesis. In the animal cell, whenever I draw round round cell, they are animal cells. Then here the center, that is the division of the cytoplasm take place from the side and move towards the center. You can make out here. This is like this. It is moving towards the center. This is called cleavage pattern. It is normally from the side to the centripetal type. Right? And here the nucleolar membrane is brought and the nucleus is getting completely formed. This is nucleus, nucleus and nucleus. Nuclear membrane is formed and nucleus also is formed. This is how they are separating. These are the two daughter cells. Okay. Now they are separating with the nuclear, nuclear membrane. Now this is happening in the animal cell I told you. This is the whole diagram I am giving, giving you is in animal cells. Okay. But in plant cell this will not happen. In plant cell it will be having the structure like this. When the two daughter cells are formed, daughter nuclei are separated, the chromosomes are separated here at the telophase end, there will be formation of cell plate from the center. Means it is not parting from the side and moving towards center, but it is reverse. The small cell plate is formed here. Cell plate is formed and it starts moving towards the periphery. It is centrifugal type, right? It is called phragmoplast formation. This is in the plant cells. Okay? That is in the animal cell. How have you understood my process? Mitotic cell division is like this simply. And here, the doubled chromosomes which are there, what I told you, they will separate them. Right? Cell division, at the end of cell division, if the chromosome number started with 4, now both of the cells have, daughter cells have 4 chromosomes only. They will not have half. That's why it is a mitotic cell division. So, it is very much important for the cell to undergo replication at the stage of S phase in the interface. Otherwise, it cannot form equal amount of chlorine, it will not distribute the equal number of chromosomes in the daughter cells. But now I want you to draw this diagram as a revision of a species part, but understand now it is very much essential for the molecular biology part. Okay? So take down the diagram now first. Have you finished taking the diagram? Okay. So with this background, I will go to the replication. So diagram of replication, DNA replication, I will give you now. 
So now you understood why the DNA has to double. DNA doubling is why it is required. If that doubling doesn't happen, then it will be failing to separate the or distribute equal amount of chromatin to both the daughter cells. Therefore, division of the nucleus and the equational division is important during mitotic separation. Now, let me give you something about DNA replication. I hope you have understood why I have connected this. Replication is required at the interface of the cell cycle where the chromosomes will double, DNA will double, DNA, not chromosomes, DNA will double or replication happens. We know that DNA replication is of semi-conservative type, right? Conservative replication. What do you mean by semi-conservative replication? It is the type of DNA replication in which mother DNA divides into two single strands and on each of the single strand which acts as the template a new complementary strand is formed in such a way that the two daughter cells formed at the end of cell division will have one mother DNA strand the template one daughter DNA strand the complementary strand therefore it is called semi-conservative means half of the mother DNA is conserved in each of the daughter cells. Therefore, the name semi-conservative type of replication. It was proposed by Watson and Crick and it was proved by Meselson and Stahl. Okay, those words you remember. Now, I want you to remember the structure of replication fork. That is the five mark question to you. How DNA replicates? With a labeled sketch, you are supposed to explain the process of DNA replication. So first let me give you the fork, replication fork, okay. This is the double strand DNA android, right. This is the DNA, this is the coiled DNA, this is separated DNA, okay, I have understood. This is the double strand DNA, this is coiled here, it is helically coiled and then it is separating, okay. Now, First, happen, what happens is there will be unwinding of double stranded DNA happening. This double stranded DNA will unwind by the unwinded protein and DNA kinase or helicase enzyme. Protein is unwinded. Enzyme will work like a zip notch. It keep on opening like this, they separate. Now, once it separates, the nitrogen bases break the hydrogen bonds and they get separated like this. You can see they are separating. Single single strands are formed. These single single strands which are formed now are called as the template strands. One runs in 5' to 3', one runs in 3' to 5' direction. Okay? Now, this is one template strand, that is another template strand. That is a mother DNA strand. Now, on this new complementary strand has to be produced. As we know that here, if, suppose we have A, C, T, A, G, G, A. Imagine, just some I am giving you. Then what nitrogen bases will bind to this R? For A, T will bind. For A, T will bind. For G, C, for A, T, T, A, C, G, A to T. This how, is this how they have to come one by one bind here. But it is not so simple that one by one nitrogen bases bind actually. In practical, one by one nitrogen bases are not binding. What's happening is they require a small strand of DNA which is already present that on which only it can continue multiplying. So therefore one of the template strands that runs in 3' to 5' direction, there is a binding of small strand of RNA it is called RNA primer. So whatever I am drawing here, it is the RNA primer. RNA primer. So what is RNA primer? One more question. It is the small single standard fragment of RNA containing the 
complementary nitrogen bases that initiate the process of replication on the template strand that runs in 3 prime to 5 prime direction. See, you have to write all this. Don't write, it's a strand of DRL. No, it's everybody know. RNA primer means it's a strand of RNA. Everybody will write. But what is this function? Your answer must contain what it is, what will it do, and how it looks like. Right? Now, how is RNA primer? It is a small strand of RNA measuring around 15 to 50 base pair in length small one right i told you that dna you can measure not by centimeter millimeter you measure it by the base pairs only right so 15 to 50 base pair length of this rna will initiate the process of replication on one of the dna template now keeping it aside we need to know who are the enzymes helping for replication the major enzymes involved in replication are the polymerase enzymes. The one which synthesize DNA, it is called DNA polymerase, one which synthesizes RNA is a RNA polymerase enzyme. Now I told you that RNA primer is formed, that means it is produced by the RNA polymerase enzyme. Right? The enzyme here which is binding to this or which helps in formation of RNA, this enzyme is RNA polymerase enzyme. But this will be having complemented basis to this DNA, right? But what happens if there is a chain? Instead of DNA, deoxyribose sugar, you are getting reverse sugar. For A, U will be binding because it is RNA. For this A, again U will bind here. For this G, C will bind. For A, U will bind. For T, A will be binding. This is A. So this is the complementary base pair in the RNA. During initiation of replication, changes will happen. Exactly DNA is replicating, DNA should be formed. But instead of DNA, you are getting RNA nitrogen bases, which is initiating the process of replication. And this RNA is formed by the enzyme RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is produced on DNA template. Therefore, we call this RNA polymerase as DNA dependent, dependent RNA polymerase. This is the name of the enzyme. DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Right? Now, once RNA primer is formed, it will be in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. 3 prime there will be OH group free. Now once it is started, it has initiated replication. The initiation of replication we call it as the so that is that is initiation of the replication will start uh, it is by RNA primer, right? Not by the DNA. Now once it is formed, it is a having it is giving a way for the continuation of DNA nitrogen bases to come in. Now DNA nitrogen bases will be attached to this. So here you have all the continuous bases I am writing. Anything will be okay. You can write some, any whatever comes to your mind. You can write ATGC only, not ABCD. Right? Right. ATGC you have to write continuously. Then its complementary nitrogen bases are brought to the place for protein synthesis one by one. These are the DNA nitrogen bases, not the RNA. So I will write the DNA bases here. For C, it will be G. For A, it is T. For C, it is G. For A, it is T. T to A and like this. It can, can, can continue like this. Right? It will be continuously formed from here till here. Continuously is producing G for T, C, G and A. Like this they are completely formed. Okay. It is done by the enzymes. The enzyme name for the synthesis of the, these are DNA. The thymine is brought. These enzymes that will continue to add the nitrogen bases to the 3 prime end of RNA primer. These are called DNA polymerase enzymes. And DNA polymerase 3, 2 and 3 will continue to produce this. Right? 
This will be contained in the replicating in one direction. And we call this strand, the only form strand, as it is replicating faster, we call this as the leading strand. Okay? This whole strand we call it as the leading strand. Because it is replicating fast. This is the template strand. This is the complementary strand. Or land leading strand is the complementary strand. This will continue till the end of DNA. Right? So that is the whole process of template. Okay, now one strand is like this. What about the another strand? Another strand will be replicating in a different pattern. This another strand is the same thing is not going to happen which runs in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Because here already the strand is 5', prime, RNA primer cannot initiate and RNA primer can elongate only in 5' prime to 3' prime direction, not in the reverse direction. So therefore another strand replication has a different story. What is that? This strand, for a long time it was not known, but later scientists named Okazaki identified how exactly replication happens in this another strand. He found that there were some single stranded DNA fragments present in the nucleoplasm. They will bind to this, which is if they are complementary. The thing is, if the complementary base pairs have to bind to this, they are very long DNA strands and we call them as Okazaki fragments. Okazaki fragments are nothing but the DNA strands. These Okazaki fragments are around 100 to 200 base pair length in prokaryotes, 1000 to 2000 base pair length in eukaryotes. Why they can't bind immediately? Because unless and until 100 or 1000 bases are open on this strand, they have no place to bind, right? Because they are very long strands. Therefore, Okazaki fragments will bind in a fragmented fashion. This is one Okazaki fragment. This is another Okazaki fragment. If they are not matching, this is not going to bind, okay? Now, these are the Okazaki fragments. But till the entry of Okazaki fragments, this one of the strands will be free. It has to somehow make it stable. It has to be stable. The stability is brought by the binding of some of the proteins here. These are called single strand binding protein. SSBP. Sometimes you will ask me what is SSBP? SSBP or expand SSBP. What are single strand binding proteins? These are the proteins that bind to the single template structure and these will stabilize the strand why they will have to stabilize? Just because if for a long time any strand remains a single strand of DNA and if on their opposite ends there are complementary bases present, then so many times by mispairing may happen where it will coil inside and undergo support. There is A here, here A, here G, they will bind like this. So this is called mis base pairing. This should not happen. To avoid internal pairing, these SSPP proteins will bind to one of the single strand till when, till the right Okazaki fragment reaches the place that is DNA. So these are the Okazaki fragments. I told you these are nothing but the DNA fragments or single stranded, stranded DNA which are measuring around 1000 to 2000 base pair long in eukaryotes and in eukaryotes they measure around 100 to 200 base pair long. But these I told you haphazardously, one has bound here, one may bind the other way. Therefore, there will be big big gaps left between the Okazaki fragments. These Okazaki fragments gaps are filled by the binding of certain by right nitrogen bases. This is by enzyme DNA ligase. See the words are so same same. Ligase and gyrase you may confuse helicase or it is also called as a gyrase enzyme. This is the ligase. Ligase refers to, to ligate, to bind, to cement. Okay. So these are the enzymes that will fill the gaps between Okazaki fragments. Very important. Then after the whole process is completed, another enzyme called DNA polymerase 1 will proofread the newly formed strand in the opposite direction. 
it will do exonuclease activity also and repairing activity also. So while reading, proofreading, if it finds any wrong nitrogen bases, it's going to cut them off and put the right ones. During which the whole of RNA fragment is removed and replaced with the DNA nitrogen bases. Even in the Okazaki fragments, they will be starting with small RNA primers. How the otherwise they will not be formed. They will have at the end RNA primers. These will be cut and removed during proofreading activity by DNA polymerase 1. Okay? That's how another strand formed. This is a discontinuous strand. We call this as the lagging strand. It will be slow in process. Now, apart from this, some enzymes I would like to give you for you to remember. First enzyme is called topoisomerase enzyme. Topoisomerase enzymes are those enzymes that will bind to the highly coiled DNA because just suppose the DNA is opening. Imagine two threads are coiled. They are opening from one end, a long thread. What happens the other extreme end? There are multiple coils because of the tension of opening here. If this is opening, the other extreme end, somewhere here or far away, there will be highly coils are formed, many coils are formed. These form the globular structure of DNA. Already this is globular. But because of the stress, there will be more coiling. So topoisomerase enzyme acts on this multiply coiled DNA and change the topology shape of the DNA. And along with there is one more protein called SHRP. That is called super helix relaxing protein. This will open up the multiply coiled DNA and topoisomerase enzymes will loosen the or change the shape. It will highly coil like around, it will it's like a woolen ball it becomes. It will be separating and forming thread like structures together. Topoisomerase change the topology of DNA, then super helix relaxing proteins, they will open up the super helices, multiple coils of the DNA. So so that Whenever the replication, this is the replication fork, whenever replication fork go to the end, that will be in the regular double helical structure. Otherwise, it is very complicated when they are, it is having multiple coils. Okay? I hope you understood DNA replication properly. Right? This is the most important question for you. And apart from this, one more thing will be the measles and install experiment to prove N14, N15. Right? But this is the process. A lot of questions appear from this as one mark questions. What is unwindase? What is gyrase? What is helicase? What is Okazaki fragment? What are Okazaki fragments? What is a primer, DNA, RNA primer? What is the function of DNA polymerase 2 and 3? What is proofreading? So many, so many questions are there. Once you understand the full concept, then the things are very simple to you. You feel so happy to write the answers. And you love to read more and more. If you don't re read at the beginning concept, then all the questions are a big thing for you. Because just writing an answer, knowing the answer key will not work. You should justify that, why it is right. right? So, I want you to learn this concept properly, write for me. So, your homework is, some points I gave you at the beginning. Second, I gave you the structure of DNA. You have to draw a beautiful diagram. Right? You can even make charts. Colored charts, beautiful drawing, and then the points on that, right? One minimum six to ten points you are supposed to write on the DNA structure. Later, mitotic cell division, if you have it, first piece you have we have written already. Next part is DNA replication. I want you to draw a beautiful replication fork and write points. How it is uncoiling, how is leading stand form, how is lagging stand form in each of them, all the components involved with the enzymes. Okay? Done then. So, see you in another class with only exclusively protein synthesis explanation and starting with the new unit also. Okay? Done then. See you. Have a nice day.